Calgon bath oil beads made to leave you feeling soft as an early morning dew. Can you use me in anything after you're hearing that? <laughs> Did, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I thought candy was, uh, well, uh, right after the movie was on, uh, I uh, did a couple of jokes about how I thought it was not probably among the top three best movies ever made, um, although the performers in it, some of them were quite brilliant. Um, when, when you, do you go to the films that you're um, in always? And no. Do you no. like to see yourself as an actor? Not particularly. Yeah. You're, you're so good on the screen, I think you'd enjoy looking at oh, it. I've, I've only seen myself in two films. What are those? Um, the, um, the film that made me an actor, of sorts, um, the uh, Cardinal, mm -hmm. um, and um, Myra Breckenridge. I haven't seen Myra Breckenridge. No, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> haven't had time. <laughs> well, I just haven't had the inclination or the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Uh, well, well, did, when you were making when you were making it, did you have any idea how it was going to turn out? I had none. Oh, I, none. You didn't direct it. Let's no, make that no, clear no, to no, anyone no. who that you no. merely appeared in it. Yes. No. Yeah. Could you get Brando to make more movies? I know you worked with him in Reflections of a Golden Eye. I certainly hope to work with Brando again. Yeah. One, of the, yes, one yes. of the great actors of our time. I know. It's like the, the, it's almost, someone said there hasn't been a bad frame of Brando in, in a film. There's something so terrific about it. What do you think of Moulin Rouge? Just chick tacking off some titles here. Um, I think it was a, physically a very handsome picture, and there were uh, experiments. Uh, it was... Uh, um, it uh, it exp went into a, a new area so far as color is concerned at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so far as telling the, um, so far as Toulouse Lautrec was concerned, I think he was sentimentalized. Um, I take full responsibility for this. It would be much better to tell to do Moulin Rouge today and get uh, tell the, the real about the real Lautrec. Is this an opinion that you came to after making the film or when you were making no, it? No, as I, as, as I was making it. Mm -hmm. you, you had sort of decided to do a more It couldn't have been done any other way. The mm -hmm. a clinical um, study of low track would have been quite out of the question at that time. Would that be inconceivable for a director to remake a film of his own? Somebody else remakes films? For some... um, yes, uh, there are a number of films of mine that I'd like to remake. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Um, uh, unfortunately, um, they, they usually remake uh, successful films. I'd like to make, to make uh, remake some unsuccessful films that should have been uh, better made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and making a successful film, you start off, it seems to me, with several strikes against you. I've been, I've been asked to remake some of my own films that f fulfilled everything I wanted them to, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't... Uh, Dream of it, for instance. Uh, I like the Maltese Falcon very much, and I wouldn't think of remaking it. I'd be asked to remake that. it, but I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I hope um, Treasure Sierra Madre is the one you'd want no, to do. Over. I wouldn't do that. Huh. Um, You're supposed to have had a very fine relationship with your father, which in the Freudian age is uh, hard for some people to, to have. Um, did he like the profession of acting? Oh, yes. He did? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He was very proud of his profession. Yeah. Some of the most I don't know, it's a strange phrase, but some of the most masculine actors uh, often find that, um, I'm thinking of people like Mitchum and um, maybe even uh, Spencer Tracy, I'm not sure, have felt a little odd about being in the profession of acting, even though, you know what I mean? Even yes, though they like the, yes. doing it, as if it were an odd thing for a man to do to make a living. Did your father ever No, I, do no, I don't, uh, no, not at all. Feel like that? Not at all, quite the opposite. Yeah. Um, by the way, you mentioned another great favorite of mine, a man that I hope to work with again, Bob Mitchum. Yeah. Wonderful actor who's, uh, who's uh, never really, whose talents have never really been explored. Bob Mitchum could play King Lear. <laughs> He's a great actor. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Heaven knows, Mr. Ellison. What else did you make with Mitchum? That's the only one That's I ever one. made with Bob. Yeah. I, I, he was in an, I played a cameo in another film I did. How did you happen to get into the Mexican cavalry? Oh, I was a kid down in Mexico taking dressage lessons from a great teacher. And um, I went down there with that idea in mind, or one of my reasons for going. And um, after a few lessons, why, I was a horseman. And um, 
he said, why don't you take a commission in the, in the cavalry and then you wouldn't have to pay for these lessons and you, wouldn't, uh, and you would have a uniform and I was running a little short on money and I took an honorary commission and, um, and then I jumped for the, for the Mexicans in their shows for a while. It, it's, I, I saw no action or anything like that. It was a, yeah. uh, I was an ornament. You touched your knee when you mentioned the horse. Is there any connection there? Did you ever hurt yourself riding or have you, do you have a bad knee? From uh, yes, but I don't think that's why I touched it. I've, uh. I've been, uh, yes, this knee was broken. <laughs> I've had a, I have a lot of breaks. <laughs> like to hear about those. Uh, we, I must hold up banker's card. I, okay. If you're confused about which life insurance company is right for you, Watch this from The Banker's Life of Des Moines. Talking with John Houston, were you good friends with, with Ernest Hemingway or? Yes. Uh, you yes. were? Yes, yeah. very. I read a kind of surprising, startling thing the other day about him where it said that um, somebody was talking about how you can never be sure if your work is going to be accepted in years to come, no matter how famous uh, you are at a certain time. They said, who would have dreamed that Hemingway's name would be greeted with a sneer today? Uh, when he was so considered so terrifically important just a few years back. I didn't realize it was greeted with a sneer. I didn't either. Uh, today, but apparently it is in certain circles. Uh, mm. I don't know why. Well, he'll come back. If, in that case, why? He'll come back into favor. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Mm. Ever try to talk him into acting? No. He tried everything no. else, I guess. he liked um, No, there wouldn't have been any yeah. result from that. Is Hollywood dead the way people go around saying constantly? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, as the film capital of the world, well, I think that, that day is over. Yeah. Um, but um, certainly there's wild activity in Hollywood. It's not, it hasn't got the same form as when I came in. Mm -hmm. But um, they're, they're certainly busy enough. When Orson Welles was here, he said that he only one time in his life had the complete control that a director ought to have in making a film, and that was when he made Citizen Kane. Um, how many times have you had that? I've usually had that. Have you insisted on it? Uh, no, no, it's never come up, really. Yeah. Um, that, I, I don't think I've ever uh, been out of control of a picture that I was making. Well, there was some talk that the red badge of courage was cut in a way that you didn't Oh, of. sometimes, I mean, pictures, things have happened to pictures after I've made them yeah. on three or four occasions. That's been true. You mean by the way they were put, finally put together? Uh -huh. That's right, because the, the director has, has, has not got the right of a final cut. That's amazing to me, because mm -hmm. who else would know how the picture should go together but yes, the man who made yes, it? Yes, but somebody else owns it mm -hmm. after he's finished his work. But they're businessmen, they're not movie makers. Um, I wish you'd repeat that <laughs> <laughs> and address the camera. <laughs> well, it's been said before, <laughs> but uh, was it that, wasn't there a scene that they cut out of Red Badge of Courage or something that you wanted yes, in? Yes, uh, in that instance, I, I'm uh, not unsympathetic to them. Um, I saw a preview of the Red Badge of Courage, and um, it was a pretty sickening event, so far as the, uh, as the maker of the film was concerned. Uh, the, I never saw so many people get up and leave a theater. Did they know you uh, were there? Uh, no, oh. no, no. Okay. Um, but I don't think if, if they had, it would have made any difference. They liked no part of it. And, and this particular scene, um, it was at the time of, of the Korean War. This is my attempt at uh, an explanation, mm -hmm. speculation. And um, I think that people were were tired of violence and, and uh, of the heart sickness that goes along with the real presentation, a real presentation of, of battle. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a scene that um, rubbed one's nose in it. Yeah. And it was, it was, um, it was a great, it's a great scene in the book. Which scene was it? Um, a kind of anticlimax. If you remember, the tall soldier climbs a hill, and the boy and the tattered soldier watch him die. And it's a strange, mysterious death. He says, don't touch me, let me be. And um, after he's dead, why, the two of them walk down a hill, and 
the tattered soldier uh, is scattered in his talk and uh, um, begins to uh, is a little maudlin and eventually he's walking in circles and the circles get smaller and pretty soon he falls down and, and dies and you didn't even know he was wounded uh, and uh, it was, uh, it was, it's a great scene in, in Stephen Crane's book, and I think it was a great scene in the picture. But, but, but it was too the much. The audience for the didn't movie. want it, didn't want it. That really? was cut. Um, and. Um, Does it still exist? The scene? Could you put it back in? I doubt very much that the scene is. that, uh -huh. uh, that it hasn't been destroyed. But you accept that cut? Uh, I, I, I had to, I had to, because uh, of the audience reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, see, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, when we come back, I'd like you to convince me that I should move to Ireland. We'll be back after this message from our local stations.